Um, this is um, needs this picture needs no introduction, and I'm not going to introduce it. Um, the question is whether all the stuff that's remained behind in Auschwitz, the watchtowers, the barbed wire, the barracks, and all the rest of it, tells us some different story from the nothingness of Belzec, the picture we saw just a moment ago. I mean, th these are two sides of the same coin. Belzec, half, half a million. Auschwitz, approximately one million. Um, uh, I, I can't say that I prefer Auschwitz or I prefer Belzec, or Belzec is more meaningful than Auschwitz. But what I'm trying to say is that some, part, some aspects of the Holocaust, there's nothing left to see at all, and other parts uh, of the Holocaust, you've got all the apparatus here of a big national museum, 200 staff, one and a half million visitors per year. Belzec still has very few visitors. It's a long way from anywhere. And there's nothing to see when you get there. You take five hours by train and bus from Warsaw to get to Belgitz, and when you get there, there's nothing there to see at all, except now, now the new monument. Um, so these, um, a place like Auschwitz, the, 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 the clutter which is left behind does help the present-day visitor to connect to the place and understand the place, and it's very powerful that it's there. But maybe we are too, by going there, we are too uh, aware of what there is to see, rather than the nothingness of Belgians where there is nothing to see. And maybe when we go to Auschwitz, instead of listening to how many prisoners per barrack, or how long did it take for this um, for, uh, uh, to march from the barrack to the place of labor, or how many women, or how many children, or how many gypsies, or how many Soviet prisoners of war. Instead of that, the old Belgians, where you could sit on the ground and, and mourn for the souls of the people who were murdered there, and there was nothing else to do, there was not, nothing to see, nothing to, in a way, uh, that's another way of looking at the Holocaust. I think people who go to Auschwitz today with the image of the old Belgians in their mind and can sit, just sit on the ground and mourn and spend 80% of their visit not learning about stuff which they can see in a classroom or see in a museum, but just sitting on the ground and mourning for those souls of those departed people who've got no one else to pray for them. That seems to me to be... Uh, um, why I think the old Belgian photograph is helpful in this context.